This is Frog Valley Farm and I just want to talk about a uh, closed loop system while I walk and check on fruit on our sugar apple trees. I'm just looking at our darling little zebus. My carnation. Looks like a morning after a long night. Anyway, so closed loop system, I, that's basically what we could be if we uh, just stop by embedding for our little cows and hay and I wanted to scythe a bunch of grass, but that person disappeared in my 50s and um, <laughs> they're not coming back. Uh, so, we buy bedding and I put hay in my, for my cows at night and the donkey pigs, of course, want some hay while they're standing there. So, um, I don't have to do it, but out of convenience, I do it. And, um, that's pretty much a closed loop system. I mean, I could stop it in a week, just wean them off the hay slowly. Um, but this is what they eat. This is like, this freaks zebu uh, growers out because they see all the weeds and native grass in there. I mean, look at all those flowers. It's mostly nitrogen fixers. This was a heavily compacted horse pasture for 50 years and uh, now it has cows on it. I'm waiting for the fencing people to come by and do the fencing around the barn so that we could put our rotational pasture system back in place in here. When we had horses here, we had rotational grazing in here. So just since the cows, because I didn't want to initiate them to electric fence ever, because they're so darling, uh, uh, until we have the fences built. So this will be three pastures and then four pastures where the mango trees are the, on the other side. And I plan on intercropping fruit trees throughout this. This so zebu are jungle cattle, so that's what they like, I imagine. They're originally from the jungles of India. It's kind of what we're building here. I like jungles. Um, so this is it. So being closed loop, and so you have to rely on the biology. And people get caught up with their dogma and have certain rules that they assign themselves. They have a chosen list of plants, and then they uh, have rules of what they allow and what they don't allow. I was the same way. I still am. I pull up pepper trees when I see them. I just look at the work I have to do down the road. I don't want to have to do that. So I do pull up my pepper trees, but the ones that are there, I use a chainsaw on. And um, people don't they put a rule on that and you have to get rid of everything that's not native. Well, we have a gigantic native population and this tree, this these pepper trees that do so well and all your non-native species that you try to eradicate, the blow ground biology is all native and one plant growing above ground is better than one taken out. So if you take out the above ground pepper tree and kill off the, the below ground root system there, you're killing all the indigenous microorganisms. So if you do like Centropic and you cut it and you just plant in it, I people talk about aleopathic, uh, you know, plants that kill other plants, but in my experience, and uh, when I've asked others about it, 
they've never said a tree kills another tree, you know. They've, I've never experienced it, let's put it that way. I have seen it, I think, under roses. Um, but uh, I'm talking tropical fruit trees. So if you move, remove all that biology, all that carbon, that's all carbon in your soil, which is what you want. You don't want the above ground. You want the above ground carbon, but you also want a green mat above that carbon. So it creates like a mat of degrading carbon. If you remove that and mulch it, you're not going to, you want to get mineralizable carbon or mineralizable uh, soil. Mineralized soil aggregates is what you're after, which happens through the below ground root. So you can't have the build the biology without the roots. So just because that top part is non, not native, doesn't mean the bottom part is unnative. And from people don't seem to mine the carbon from non-natives, so they'll do pepper tree mulch in a heartbeat, but you won't allow the root system to live in your living system that's connected to all your other plants and trees and just manage it. That's why you have to just manage it and not remove it. And then mulch in tropical areas. No, because it just compacts the soil more. If you live in a high rain area like we do, certain times of the year, most of the year, um, I mean, it's not uncommon for us to get four inches of rain in one like hour. And so if you don't have the protection for the soil, this is sand here, it's not lava rock. It's, it can be damaged so easily. The rain will pound, pound away your, your uh, mulch and then eventually wash it away or it'll evaporate. So there's no organic matter in the soil. And if there's no organic matter in the soil, all your indigenous native species have been wiped out. So the interconnecting roots is really uh, what you want. You, you kind of need the, the roots in the ground, Trump dogma, so rules. In a tropical area, it's the only way I've seen it can happen, and it's kind of what I see the indigenous peoples do. So. Um, I think that's probably how it's supposed to be, to be honest with you. And then you have to incorporate animals into it for the fertility. Uh, we have like thousands of birds here. Nobody else has birds uh, that I can see and everyone else's property is flooded. We had a house developed in the back of, on the back couple of acres to, at the end of our property. Um, and they've put a bunch of fill up and they made it like in some areas, four feet taller than our property, like right next to us. And I thought, oh, well, that'll be good, I'm sure. Um, cause that's what they do in Florida. They, uh, they get on it and they mow it and they compact it and they kill it. It's just, that's just fact. And, uh, people need to get wise to it. So, uh, here's their property that looks like a lake and I walk all through ours and we don't have any standing water. We had an area that had standing water um, 
that was caused by something somebody did. Uh, I'm not sure what, maybe pulling out trees. I don't know. I don't want to know. Um, but I buried the biodynamic horn, 500 horn um, manure that we made here, the whole horn in areas that um, were like low areas that had standing water for long periods of time, hot standing water. These are all sugar apples along here. Uh, red ones and uh, they're all along our driveway on both sides the red never really produces well for us um, it citrus is amazing here sorry I just I mean that it is a citron you know it's a highly expensive fruit um, that doesn't get watered and um, like these sugar apples Nothing gets watered right here. The ginger, nothing. We don't have to water because of the biology. And the reason why people think that plants kill other plants probably is what I'm thinking is that um, when you start with a nursery grown tree like a canistel or a white sapote, uh, even a mango and this tree has been given every chemical known to man and more and you try to introduce them into a organic natural system that you're just starting out or a transitional system The, 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 the roots are not inoculated, so that's why we use seeds to grow most of our trees now. So uh, you need to inoculate the seeds with biological primers so that the, the tree will grow a rhizosheath around its roots, root system. because in a nursery grown trees, they can't, uh, you can't, they can't form associations with uh, the diversity of microbial life that grows in the roots to, that will enable the, your tree to grow at 100%. Sugar apples seem to outgrow it. Um, this is a ginger where I took part of it out and uh, during the drought that other part died. So, uh, it's, you know, it's, they're, all the roots are connected. So if you don't, if your trees don't form a rhizosheath, they're not going to be able to uh, get water or nutrients. And that's why closed loop systems probably have failed in the past. So when the citrus industry, they like uh, remove all this stuff. A lot of people do. They think you have to have a, a ring around your trees. Um, or, or what, a dead zone? Get rid of your rules and focus on soil health. That's the only dogma you really need. The five principles of soil health. I've never taken a permaculture course. I like watching permaculture videos, and, but I don't really like the Florida form of permaculture. I like the Australian form of permaculture, the old style. Um, the Florida form is too wrong for Florida. You can't like destroy all the biology just because you don't like the top part of a plant. There's too much going on below ground for you to do that. You, you, it's just, it's been proven. So it just, it doesn't make sense. And like I said about mulch, 
it doesn't create mineralizable carbon like the below ground root does. Uh, the cassava is finally coming up. I had a friend here that I let come here more than I let anybody else ever come here. And he gave me all those cassavas pieces. Thank you. So this is an uh, area that was planted in all kinds of stuff. Uh, I've done sweet potatoes, I've done sugar apples, I've done adamoyas, and we're talking the entire thing, hundreds of trees, hundreds of sweet uh, sugar, uh, sweet potato slips. And finally what was working was the bananas, and, um, or not the bananas, the, the mangoes, but unfortunately this road just got fried, like, I don't know, 12, 13 mangoes, not the whole row, but half of it got fried at our record low of 31 degrees. We had this here for five hours. Uh, the bananas are looking good. too shaky. So people uh, think that there's just like two or three items growing in this orchard floor. Mm, no, there's like, I've counted 15 different types of uh, fruiting mushrooms and uh, more than 15 different legumes and it changes. Um, I love roses. Old fashioned roses, tea roses, thornless climbers. That's what I like. So eventually I'll do a video on that. So those sugar apples don't look that good. So there's still Adamoyas in here now because I'm trying to transition to Adamoya. And there's sugar apples. These are little, some of them are a lot bigger. So this. Yes, there they are. So I have a trail between right here that I've taken. So far, so good. This doesn't look good though. You don't want the black. Nope. Don't want the black. Not on your sugar apples. Those look better. These are mostly chewy sugar apples and they mostly look good. Uh, I don't know if they'll be sellable if the black doesn't spread. <sighs> Smell pe oh no, it's this, this with a horrible name. You know, this is an ancient grain, so. It's uh, almost smelled like smoke. I hadn't seen that in two years. This ginger is like, because of our hurricanes here and because sugar apples uh, don't like uh, wind, you know, Anonas really don't like wind that much. Um, the uh, height of this is good for keeping them stable and they seem to like growing in it. The bananas that I planted in here are coming up. It's 
So bananas, we don't have to water. We don't water our bananas. Uh, we we uh, get quite a few bananas. We're planting, I'm planting for a lot more. I, almost all of them are Namwa through here. More than a hundred. I see some black. Um, so we don't have to hand pollinate these. Some of them look good, some of them don't. I guess that's how it's gonna be. Uh, oh, the soil, is, you start sinking in it. This is our Genova Red Elama. Um, they put that pole in next to it and uh, didn't hurt the tree at all. There was no pole there like a year ago, I guess, or a year and a half ago. So I thought these sugar apples looked better last time. I'm gonna have to uh, look at that video. Adamoyas are doing good. That's what I want. I like the Adamoya. Sorry, sugar apples. I'm not going to completely get rid of you, but we are having Adamoyas um, through here. We have so many freaking sugar apple trees that I'll get more than enough sugar apples for anybody to want. So there will at least be one fruit or two on there that's like super premium. Um, that I'll do a video on eventually. And I would like to sell some of these, but I'm not gonna sell them unless they're good. They have to meet a certain standard. I planted this huge farm to sell fruit and I'm realizing that I don't really like to sell fruit. Kind of stupid, huh? But I guess I could get Miami fruit to start selling biodynamic fruit if they wanted, but uh, we'll see. But I just, I don't know, it's just too much work for me, I think. Too much work. It takes away from my grow time. So yeah, all this nonsense of uh, people saying that you can't grow in Florida because you, it, there's not enough nutrients or there's too many bugs here. It's because they didn't know what they were doing, period. With the advances in science, It's kind of showing that the old ways, especially the old chemical ways, so if you're throwing crap in your holes when you plant fertilizer because you read it on Facebook, I've seen that type of farming and it more looks like a plant specimen factory to me. So a good place to buy large trees. That's what it looks like to me. If you're using fertilizer and you're growing trees in rows like that, it's a in-ground plant nursery. You just dig them out with the, it's all sand here. So it's really easy. This system you cannot drive on. You have to hike into this system. And people want to come by here, but I like the naturalness of it without the distractions. And 
really I show everything in the video and I kind of only like to have people come by here that want to grow biodynamic food. Because without my biodynamic dogma that I did for three years or whatever it was, straight, non-stop biodynamic, moon, blah, blah, blah. I found that I plant on the days that they suggest to plant here, so I don't really have to bother looking. Anyway, this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. This is a closed loop system.